Yeah, but, but he was searching for his He's waifu, searching for a waifu, so right? And he does go with the rogue. We actually are pretty on point with picking who. I told you, I'm good at this. Time. Yeah, it was very nice. I'm good at this. So it's going to be the rogue versus the tempo mage. Tansaku sticking to the tempo mage, knowing he has to get a win, of course. This is conquest. Best of seven. You have to win with every single class you bring to the table, except for the one that's banned, of course. I just have to finish up on this before we get into the game. So Navi, when he submitted his decks, he named them in order, I'm a weeb and proud. <laughs> and so his, his rogue is named And, and it shows him searching for a waifu. It's reasonable. It's very reasonable. Yeah, and he's uh, using the rogue now. I was going to use a different phrase then, but it wouldn't have come off too <laughs> well. But it's going to be the Tomb Pillager keep as Tonsaku takes his time over what he wants to keep. He's got, a, got one of those weird hands. He's got the ultimate Flame Waker combo. But if you don't, you know, if you fall too too behind before you can get to that turn four, turn five, we can start comboing those spells to the Flame Waker. And it's not going to be enough, so he did throw most of it. Keeps the Flame Waker with the coin, of course. And a double Sorcerer's Apprentice and Arcane Missile. So definitely got a good amount of options, but not having an Arcane Blast available, I always think feels kind of rough. Because if you have any of the spell power minions early, that Tomb Pillager on four that you're always expecting versus Rogue is just going to die. Yeah, definitely. And the thing is for a Tonsoku there is that if he was playing against Zoo, for instance, that's a that's a hand that he keeps, right? Yeah. But other than the insane Flame Waker coin arcing missiles combo, he didn't he wants to get on the board faster than the rogue and kind of just kill Valir before mm -hmm. she's able to get off. So certainly Tonsoku is the aggressor here. Obviously you can get the tempo back by using the Flame Waker and Arcane Missiles, but he just wants to get on the board as quickly as possible. Yep. I wouldn't mind. Yeah, there we go. There's the Acolyte of Pain. Another interesting choice in this deck. Going to lean towards the, uh, for example, the, the hot form variant of Tempo Mage from right. not too long ago of really using Acolyte to just cycle into more burn and just generally playing the deck in a more aggressive way as opposed to more recently everyone's been going like Antonidas, Cabalist Tomes to really take the game late. But, you know, we know Tansoku likes his aggressive <laughs> decks. Look at this. Uh, I'm actually somewhat surprised he doesn't go for a coin into Sources Apprentice and then fire all this off. You're not going to be worried about Blade Flurry these days, so I feel yeah. like... Oh, uh, there we go. Oh, no. He stopped. He so just he's, realized. He's like, yep. Mistakes were made, Navi. Like, yep. Things have gone wrong. I agree, actually. Wow. I think there was almost... Especially your next turn is Azure Drake. So Your turn after that is yeah. probably Azure Drake. There is, now, this apprentice is not coming down anytime soon now, more than likely for Tonsaku, and he is forced to use the coin, kills the Tomb Pillager, and now he's just like, is he even going to play the missiles? Yeah, he's just banking on the damage. He's like, okay, I'm going to play aggressive. And you know what I think is a bit of an issue there? I think if you messed up, you need to just play your turn quickly. Because now Navi knows he messed up. Do you know what I mean? Because of the, the weird sort of pause and delay and then having to just coin out missiles on nothing. Um, feels kind of awkward and m maybe it doesn't come across as a huge mistake. It was just annoying that the missiles didn't hit. But the time it took Tonsaku to continue his turn sort of feels like, oh, maybe there was something a bit off there. And it maybe it means Naviu can cash in on this and throw him off a little bit more. Yeah, certainly. Although at this point, it looks like Naviu is kind of in his own head thinking about what the best line of play is here and does get the backside, which is pretty huge in this situation. So he can now clear the board if he so chooses. Yeah, I kind of like it. You uh, don't want that Flame Waker to live in any kind of situation whatsoever. It's going to cause you more havoc, especially from such an aggressive start from Tonsoku. But now you continuing to move quite often on that camera and just uh, <laughs> Put himself in a good position, Ooh, though. One turn off from being able to do this. In fact, oh my. You if know he what? had the coin. If he had, no, if he had the Sorcerer Apprentice on the field right now, he gets three extra damage to face, and he gets to use the Arcane Blast onto the Drake. Yeah. Wow. Wouldn't be too shabby whatsoever. If Tansoku doesn't take this game, then that's probably the reason why. Yep. Couldn't go as aggressive as he wanted to. And like I said, it's just taking more and more time for this Apprentice to get on the board. Sap is going to be used by Navi to just gain the board for himself now just going to drop down the thanos no real grand plan to use the spell power more than you know if it survives great but mainly for the card draw now is he's slowly putting himself in a position where he can end the game a lot of minion pressure and he does have leroy he does have si agent for maybe an additional sprinkling of damage that you can do there with the comboed ability but is your drake into blast is going to come out the thanos slips 
Yeah, like you mentioned, Navi it's picked up a bit of damage, but he kind of just wants to be able to get onto the board here. Picks up a Squash Burglar. He kind of just wants to pick up Gadgets in very, very quickly. Uh, that's I, I, reasonable. He, it allows him to start clearing up this board a bit, but he just wants to play the SI anyway. I'll tell you a story about Squash Burglar. I don't know how much of the EU last call you watched, D2, but there was a Swash Burglar into Wind Fury. Yeah, into I second saw, I saw Burglar, that. I, I into second <laughs> Wind Fury. So this 1-1 one -one looks innocent sometimes, but he is a mean, mean guy that can ruin games and cause your opponent to actually potentially even cry. Uh, but we're going to see a bit of flame out of this one. Nothing too crazy, but it did allow him to clear off the Azure Drake whilst yep. holding onto the board and whilst holding onto the Thanos. So again, Navi put himself in a pretty strong position. And now, Tonsaku's... It's time to go to, off. Yeah, going to be able to actually do something onto the board this turn and hopefully make enough of an impact to wrestle the ball back from Navut. Right. So he can go Source Apprentice into Double Mana Worm, Arcane Intellect. He still has one mana left. And hopefully, for his sake, he picks up a one cost spell. But he's kind of running out of those, right? I think he has one Mirror Image and one Arcane Blast remaining. He could pick up a two cost spell, right? With the right, right, right. Down. Yeah, true, true. So he, he can go for a Frostbolt. more options. Yeah, just a couple. Yeah, and I think he's just going to go as wide as he can onto this board. The question is, he actually might go for a ping onto the Thalnos just to prevent... Yeah, I think he's going to go for the ping, actually. Because the only thing that this really dies to is spell damage plus fan. Mm -hmm. And if he gets rid of the spell damage, then it's much weaker. Yep, and he did already use one fan as well. So Ooh. again, it's really uh -oh. just... Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> Navi is thinking about it. He's like, okay, do I believe in the fan or do I go for the save questing adventure? He's oh, he actually can get off the prep anyway. Yeah, he's got the prep. Yeah, okay, so, so this is fan. This the is fan. This here. is kind of huge. This is not fan. It is, in fact, a cold blood. And that is not going to Can't really use it either. No, there's not going to be enough value from it. Is obviously, he has to use the minions to actually clear up the mirror images. But he does have Leroy. So he just has a guaranteed 10 damage on demand right. uh, going forward. So the Cold Blood isn't completely useless. And also, just this quest adventure might not look too threatening. Uh -oh. How much damage is this? This is a kind of a lot of damage. Tonsaka is adding it up as we speak. He already added it up, it looks yeah, like. The second it gets point to face, you know, and that the double Mana Worm gaining plus one attack for every spell, that just, you know, times two. So much extra damage. And Tonsaku is going to take this game and even it versus Navi, but... Let's be honest, the turn